Hey everybody, welcome back to another week and another episode of Lionheart Radio. Today I'm talking with David Lyman about his nonprofit organization named Team Overwatch. Uh, we start talking about the nonprofit and then we get into a whole bunch of other esoteric notions such as how to not be such a dick in your regular life and how to understand people better. This is a little bit different than we typically talk about in Lionheart Radio, but I think it's a, a really valuable exercise in uh, how to be a better person. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. And without further ado, David Lyman. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Lionheart Radio. I'm your host, Rick Alexander, founder of Blue Aviv in San Diego, California. And today I'm in San Diego, California, and I am joined by David Lyman. He is the founder of a nonprofit organization named Team Overwatch. David, thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So we were just talking a little bit pre-show about uh, the fact that you are active duty military, which is super cool. We're an active duty military owned uh, company, brand, everything. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the impetus behind starting a nonprofit because I'm currently in the midst of looking at starting a nonprofit. Uh, so far, it's been an absolute nightmare as far as paperwork yeah. goes. Yeah. So you, the thing about uh, having an NPO organization is that the IRS makes you earn it. That's what I kind of started. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So I want to talk about like what it is that, that drives <laughs> you forward, why you even wanted to do this in the first place. Um, so active duty, I've been in the Navy 16 years, a little over 16 years now. Um, came into EOD community a little over 10 years ago. Uh, and, and really it was like the community that kind of pulled me in. The job was, was pretty amazing just by default, but like the people that are in it, like the caliber of, of uh, like integrity and team teamwork and, and you know, brotherhood or mm-hmm. sisterhood, you know, what have you, was like was just there and that was something I was craving. In the community. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, like in the military, like, you know, I was yeah. in the fleet for four years. Uh and there's nothing wrong with it. It was just not what I was looking for. Sure. It just wasn't giving me that, you know, uh, fulfillment. Fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so, uh, you know, I actually got out for about a year and a recruiter was like, well, what about the reserves? And I was like, uh, nothing to do with the ship. And he's like, well, what about EOD? And this is around 2005. Okay. And a platoon came, well, a detachment is what they called them then, came back from Iraq and I was like getting their dive gear ready for a dive day. And uh-huh. I was like, so what do you guys do? And Gave me kind of a funny look, and then when I learned about it, I was just like, "This is it! Like, this is it!" Awesome. Uh, you know, so fast forward to 2014. Um, you know, I've, I've had three UD deployments by then, um, and just some of the guys I'd seen, and, and just my exposure in the military. It's a very different life being in like the UD community versus the fleet. So I want to unpack it just a little bit for the listener, um, because you know a lot of people that are listening to this, we have listeners in other countries, sure. and, you know, all over the world. So EOD is Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Yep. You are essentially bomb squad. Yes, like the right. Navy's bomb squad. We're on the hook for uh, five mission areas, which which is uh, somewhat of a daunting task at times, trying to know uh, know and be current in our tactics. Um, mm-hmm. So we cover um, chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons. Uh, surface ordnance, um, IEDs, and then underwater. Anything underwater basically falls to us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a massive skill set uh, to have, but essentially Navy uh, bomb squad. Yeah, and in the Navy, it's a special operations unit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Perfect. And we yeah, attach, and then we attach to other elements or assets, units, what have you, in support of them. Right, of course. So, and then when they have a demolition scenario, you guys handle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, IEDs, or if they need us to clear piers, or you know, what have you. I mean, we can kind of do it all. Like, mm. we need to be able to do anything the asset we are supporting can do. Right. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure the listener knows it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely cool. not. Um, so, you know, around 2013, uh, specifically, there was, uh, you know, a little bit of social media drama about other nonprofits out there. Um, Veteran-based. Yeah. And, you know, like the integrity of them versus, you know, how much money goes through to the veterans, how much is spent on salaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, you see a lot of like, I, I guess I started seeing a lot of the guys that have been hurt, seeing the impacts on their families. Like, well, I mean, if I'm going to, you know, critique how these other nonprofits are doing it, maybe I should maybe get some put education. Right. Yeah. Sure. Put, put the money in my mouth. Like, well, right. if I can do better, let's, I mean, I don't know that I can, but let's, Let's yeah. see what's up. Like, right. let's try to do something. So I started uh, Team Overwatch. Uh, the idea being kind of combining team 
with like so athleticism in Overwatch being a military term, uh, meaning you know to look over your 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 team, your unit, okay, sure. right? Overlooking a unit, protecting them in a way. Okay. Uh, the mission being, we would fundraise uh, through athletics to help families out that weren't maybe getting the help they needed, whether that was insurance isn't paying, it's not paying soon enough, mm-hmm. or it's not something that's typically covered, uh, you know, what have you. We wanted to be kind of a, a safety net mm-hmm. for that or for them. Yeah. So we registered uh, the company. Then we got a nonprofit status December of 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, it's me and one other person still. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're small. We're really yeah. small. Um, you know, and like the paperwork, like we have, you know, the biggest thing we pay for is probably our lawyers. Right. Uh, we just have, we just want to make sure it's done right because I have no experience in that. Right. It's like, and it, it's you know, a nightmare. I mean, yeah. the IRS, you know, there, I think so many people have abused nonprofit status that Absolutely. the IRS just felt like, well, I mean, they're the government in the they're first just, place, right? Yeah, just there's just no to... room for error. Right. Like, there's no sympathy. Yeah, right. And, and it's not malicious. They just, they don't have time for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and on top of that, I'm active duty. I have two children. Right. So I don't have time for it either. I don't want to do it wrong <laughs> right, and then right, have right. to redo it. Um, so, but something you said right there is like, okay, you guys are small and uh, people might hear that and they might have a certain connotation with a, a company or a nonprofit that's small. Mm-hmm. But I do want to draw a light to the fact that large doesn't necessarily mean better. Exactly. Let's talk about the Wounded Warrior Project for a second. Well, we don't have to talk about them. Maybe you don't want to mention them by name, but um, there's a lot of veteran organizations and this is something that I've become acute, acutely aware of. Um, because when I ran the Tahoe 200, I raised money for an organization called the Heroes Project. In my mind, I think they really get the mission right. And yeah, I, I really did yeah. a lot of time like researching the charity. There's a lot of companies, you know, and the Wounded Warrior Project did such a great job branding themselves that they gained so much recognition and they got a lot of key corporate yeah. partnerships. I'm like, absolutely jealous of their marketing. Yeah, <laughs> right. They crush it. They how, crush could it. Yeah, yeah. how could you not be? Um, yeah. How could you not be? But then there's a lot of questions about whether that money is going to the right people or not, right. um, or to the people that deserve it. And, it. and it really sucks because there's a lot of people across from uh, Maine to San Diego that really their hearts are in the right place. They want to buy things like from Under Armour when they have that Wounded Warrior logo in, in their mind. They're doing the right thing. And that's just not necessarily the truth. So I just wanted to quickly draw a light to the fact that just because you're small doesn't yeah. actually equate to better or worse yeah especially and, in the nonprofit yeah space. you know and, and if I'm honest about it like uh, that that was who sort of inspired me in a way like I it was on the bandwagon like you know those guys are, are thieves and da 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 and, yeah right and it's like well you know I kind of looked like well how much does a CEO of deserve to get paid mm-hmm. I, I don't know um, you know, but, but really the point was like, well, if I'm going to judge these guys without knowing anything about what they're doing, maybe I should get educated. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and so I learned about nonprofits. I read about them. I talked about, uh, talked about with some lawyers. Um, I talked about IP, you know, uh, intellectual property. Like, how can I make a successful um, nonprofit and, and keep it like where I have, I don't want to say control, like it has to be my way, but, you know, maintain... Uh, the mission without you know getting too big that like I can get sort of uh, I guess I just want to make sure that we stay true to the original direction yeah the original absolutely. intent sure yep. um, so myself and my partner like we don't get paid we don't take payout okay uh, that'll probably change as we grow I mean we're gonna have to bring on you know marketing people and you know brand managers mm-hmm. and, and admin people and, and you know eventually we're gonna have to start doing that um, but we want to live by like charitynavigator.org or charitywatch.org's guidelines which those are charity watchdogs they're the ones like that that say you know this is the top 10 in paid employees yeah this is how much money flows through this is you know and what what are do you know what their guidelines are like a quick so, so it's rule. i think charity navigator uh to get a four star rating you have to have a 90 percent flow through okay so 90 percent of the money that comes in said. goes right back out okay currently team overwatch sits at 93 percent. that's averaged over four years okay um and how we do that like so, so you know jenny my partner um she's also a general manager of a, of a really successful restaurant here in san diego mm. so you know we we find time yeah <laughs> yeah right. um so neither of us take any pay for it and we use athletic apparel the sale of athletic apparel to pay for all the bills okay. that way when donations do come in we don't have you know if you give me a hundred bucks say that's for the fa- this family 
all hundred bucks goes out. I don't use donations for right. the lawyers. Well, so what the, let's talk about the seven percent then that doesn't flow through because you guys aren't even taking a salary and you're still somewhere seven percent of yep, and, and that's going to so that does cost. so that is um, so that ninety three percent is total of all of our income, including the apparel, uh, including other things that like so mm. if people donate uh, to Team Overwatch, then we you know we'll use it for our but if you know. If you donate 100 bucks, you say, "Hey, this is earmarked for this family." That goes straight. Gotcha. Through. So okay. you know, if we're doing a big campaign, um, like we're fundraising for a family right now, if somebody says, "Hey, this money is for them," absolutely, that goes to them. Okay. Um, so and and really, I used to pay. It used to be higher because I was paying for lawyers out of my own pocket. Right. And now we're trying to transition to where the, the company is a bit yeah. more. You know, it's had you know a little over four years now um, since they got. It's LLC. Um, and if you're able to scale, you're able to touch more lives, and that's just the bottom right. line of yeah. it, right? And, yeah, and that's know, good stuff growth, for people will come, to yeah. yeah, with growth comes well, more expense, but also, like, then we can do more. Right. You know, typically, you know, so far, we've, we've been able to help one family a year. Um, I would love to see that grow. Those families, like, I communicate with them pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a pretty... Like seeing them, meeting them, and seeing like what they're going through is like. Uh, and so let's talk yeah, about that a little. It's bit. It's hard at times. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, how are you picking with what projects to put your money toward? Is it families that have been affected by a by a service member, Gold Star families? Like, what are we talking about here? So uh, the the family we're helping right now, the Clements. Um, uh, Sean Clements was in the military, got out after uh, 13 years, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Um, not not injured. Uh, you know, I think he got hurt during some training, um, but you know, he got out. Okay. He works as a um, air traffic controller with the FAA, and he, his little boy, so Sean and Julie are the parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have twins, Cole and Corbin, and Corbin was recently diagnosed with autism, epilepsy, and uh, sensory processing disorder. Oh, so he has, from what I understand, and I'm sorry, Sean, I'm probably butchering it. Yeah. Uh, he gets really high anxiety in crowded places, markets, uh, airports, whatever. Uh, epilepsy, which right. has got to be a nightmare. Seizure. And then he's on the spectrum, right? So they're trying to get um, a service animal. There's these dogs that can be trained to detect uh, you know, the chemical precursor to a seizure up to a minute. Hmm. But that's not covered by insurance, uh, as far as I can tell. Okay. So they found um, a nonprofit that trains these animals uh, basically, it's a thirty-four thousand dollar dog. Um, oh, the nonprofit, shit. yeah, yeah, I, I can't even fathom that. Right. Um, so the nonprofit says, well, if you raise half first and you give it to us, we cover the other half and then we train the animal. Oh, so awesome. they started raising money, um, and a friend of theirs actually knew knew what I was doing and knew that I was looking for a family to, to fundraise for. Mm-hmm. Um, so put us in touch. And we started talking. So they raised eight thousand dollars on their own before they even asked for help. Nice. Uh, you know, so then we've we've held um, we did our first race, our first trail race in June uh, of this year. What was that? How long was that? Uh, we did a 15, 30, and sixty k distance. Okay. So nice. and we're looking at we're already talking with the venue again for next year. We are absolutely doing the race, but we're thinking uh, maybe twenty five, fifty, and a hundred. Okay. Um, permitting gets kind of tricky. We'd like to do a hundred miler. Um, yeah. But that would be two days, so we'll see. Yeah. You know, again, it's money. Right? Right. We don't want to spend too much on a venue that we're not really gonna right. maximize. Um, we're also uh, we have we've had really a really incredible relationship forming with uh, Ragnar Trail Relays. Mm. Uh, we're gonna be at their Los Coyotes uh, venue in November, and we're gonna host their beer garden. So we we were able to get a bunch of beer donated um, and some wine donated. So Team Overwatch will be running the beer garden there, mm-hmm. and then we keep 100% of the proceeds from that. Nice. So, I mean, that's, you know, so that's how we fundraise for these families, because, like, how are they supposed to, you know, single-income family, right? Uh, you know, if it's not covered by, I'm not sure why we pay insurance if, if something like that's not covered. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, it's a whole I don't get it. I, you know, it's like, a whole different debate. Who knows? <laughs> right. Um, you know, so the family before them, uh, the Lindleys, like, um, severe PTSD, TBI, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of other things that go along with that. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the uh, Jasmine Lindley said that there was like 26 combat-related injuries. Okay. In addition to, you know, the TBI and oh, the PTSD. Jesus. Okay. They don't pay for a service animal. Um, again, insurance doesn't pay for it. Even yep. though, like, the doctor's like, hey, 
the service animal would be really useful. Yeah. So uh, we were actually able to get a cheaper dog mm-hmm. than 34 grand, um, but we fundraised for it. We, we worked with another nonprofit, um, not a nonprofit, um, uh, Landheim Canine out in Indiana and got, like, they are the guys that train the police dogs, like, around the nation. Okay. Uh, so they trained this animal. Uh, they trained PTS dogs, support animals. Uh, trained him and got him to this family, um, you know, for a third of what it would have cost just to go out in, in town and, and get that kind of animal. Right. But they didn't have that kind of money. Right. You know, five kids, like, I mean, single income on military dis- disabled uh, disability. Yeah. How? 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 Yeah. We, you know, I don't see how that's possible. Okay. Um, you know, so that's the kind of stuff we do. You know, in addition to that, like, uh, you know, we got Justin the dog. Um, and, you know, one thing we wanted to help with is like, well, what can we do to make him feel, um, I don't know. I, I think, I remember Jasmine and I had this, t- this conversation and she said uh, that he, he had, you know, survivor guilt. When he got hit in... Um, I, mean, I can't remember if it was Iraq or Afghanistan. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it was Iraq. Okay. Got hit. The driver was killed. And then Justin was hurt, uh, obviously. And the other two guys and Chuck were hurt. Like, so bad that they were airlifted out, uh, you know, spent their time in Germany, finally got home for recovery, but never got to say goodbye or pay their last respects. Yeah. Uh, to the driver, to their friend. Um, so after we got him the dog, we, we were able to send Justin and his two friends uh, to pay their final respects at the gravesite mm. of of their friend who died like yeah. this is six years later or so. Wow. Um, and this, this is an interesting uh, kind of topic unfolding, I think, because whenever you look at a problem, if you look at something in the world and you think, okay, yeah, there's a problem with what I'm looking at, right? Clearly there's an injustice here where, you know, people are coming back from this horrific uh, wartime and then health insurance and and the industry that we have in place isn't meeting the mark, right? And why would it? Because the executives that are running a health insurance company, um, they probably have no fucking idea what it's like to have survivor's guilt because you got fucking bombed in a country 5,000 miles away, right? Like, that's it's very far from people's ability to fathom. Even if you, even if you want to, right? Like I don't know how That's you, right. how you, you, how can't you begin get to, empathetic enough. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, n- rarely. And so what I'm yeah, interested rarely. in, and this is kind of cool listening to you talk about it because it's like when you look at something and there's a problem and a gap here, it's like how do you go about putting resources and money in the right place to fill that gap? Because that's another thing that. Yeah, sometimes I think NPOs miss the mark on is that they try to throw money at a problem and it's like, okay, I got it, but money doesn't always, right? Now if yeah. money, like it's like you, you identify, okay, we need money so that we can buy this dog. We need money so we can fly him because the actual problem is survivor's guilt. It's not, you can, that's not, a, yeah, you can't just say here's a hundred bucks exactly. and survivor's guilt, like poof, it would be great if it did, it right? But, but nobody would have it anymore because yeah. we could just solve it. Right. Yeah. I've got a friend in Ohio, and he has he lost his legs, and uh, he lost a, his wife left, and he you know this just terrible story that I don't really want to unfold on air, but essentially uh, the VA took care of him. He made a lot of money afterward. Of course, he got a big payout, and um, the TSGLI paid out, and his house is paid off, and he has a big bank account, and he is fucking miserable because yeah. it's money it's not, did not solve the problem. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool thing you try to figure out, kind of like how to plug it in and put thought into where to put resources and money. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's exactly it. Like each time I, you know, we do have like a, uh, we have programs in place for like people that want to fundraise, like sponsored athletes, Mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever. But when, when a family comes, like, you know, when we, when a family approaches us or we approach a family, it's like, okay, how can we best impact them? Like we don't have a ton of money. Right. You know, so, so even if we, even if we did, like, that's not necessarily the answer. It's like, okay, so, you're just you know, willing to. What can we do? Like, what do they really need? Mm-hmm. You know, in the case of the Lindley, it's like, okay, he needs this dog. Yeah. Uh, and from what I can tell, like from talking to Jasmine after they got the dog, uh, you know, Justin didn't want to get up in the morning like before. Mm-hmm. Didn't get up. Wasn't you know had a hard time getting motivated. And you know, the last time Jasmine and I talked, like he was getting up in the mornings sometimes before her, mm-hmm. helping out around the house, volunteering uh, at Landheim where they trained the dog. Like okay. he was getting out and getting, like he was finding it in himself to go do things. Right. Uh, is that because of the dog or is that because of he got to pay his rest? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. hopefully it contributed. Yeah, of course. Right. Right. Um, 
so I, th- I think that's kind of my motivation is like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, we can put some money towards the problem, but what, you know, I don't want to just like, I don't want to just say like, here's some socks. We did some good. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Exactly. I want to, I want to try to make a difference. Mm-hmm. So, and what is, um, you, you mentioned an, an athlete sponsorship program. If they want to raise money, what does that look like? So, uh, a lot of, so I'm a, I'm a runner. I, I, I do, I've done a couple runs, um, where I was fundraising, I've done some bomb suit runs in the bomb suit. So the 74 oh, pound EOD suit. How long uh, have you gone in that thing? I've done a 5k and a 10k in that thing. Um, and then at the Ragnar in November, I'll be doing each loop in the bomb suit. So I think that's a, I think that's around 15 miles. Okay. So we'll see that. That'll be the longest. The longest I've hiked in it was 23 miles. Okay. Um, God we did damn. that for uh, SoCal rock a couple years ago. Um, so the sponsored athlete program is essentially, you know, say if you want to come raise money, like you're aware of like the family that we're, we're mm-hmm. working on, uh, you want to help. Uh, okay, so pick a race. Like you want to do the Tahoe 200 next year. Yep. Excellent. What's the, um, you know, the entry fee is, you know, 500 bucks. We say, okay, we will cover that and you will pledge to pay, you know, uh, you know after the race or whatever, uh, 500%. Yep. Gotcha. You know, so, and I think 500% sounds kind of intimidating at first, but like a 5k might cost 50 bucks. So that's not that hard to fundraise. Right. Tahoe 200 might cost a little bit more. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and you wouldn't be on your own either. Like yeah, we, course. you know, we have enough connections around the city. You know, you could go to a restaurant and have them donate a portion of the proceeds per however many people come in. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's your ROI that you look for is 500%. Yep. That's good. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then you sign a contract, um, Mm-hmm. You know, that our lawyers draw up, so yeah, it's a nice right. legally binding contract. Sure, um, you know, and the idea, you know, and one hundred percent of that goes to the target. That not, one is earmarked; it's not going to the foundation. Uh, yep, Dope. not not even a little bit. It goes entirely to that family. You know, of course, like we don't cut a check to the family. Um, you know, like for example, with the uh, the family we're helping right now, the Clements. Like we've already talked to the nonprofit that mm-hmm. we, and we will be making a check payment. On their behalf, okay. You know, we don't send money, and that's sure. that's common practice for nonprofits. Yeah. But I mean, we are as transparent as possible. So, I mean, right. I'll show anybody any that wants to see it in my yeah. records. So. Yeah, we well, legally have I'm, to, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm definitely not making any money off of this. So. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, when a mutual friend had introduced me um, to your charity and and had started to connect us, the first thing I saw was your tagline. Which is, what have you done to de- turn your legs today? Is that it? What have you done to deserve your legs? That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So, uh, man, I was a, I was young in the community. I met this guy named Andrew Bertrell. Um, he was a triple amputee. And, I mean, I, there's guys in the community, like, you don't have to be, you know, an amputee uh, to be, you know, inspiring. Right. Or, right. or to have been through hell. Um, but I've met him and another guy named John Kramer. Um John Kramer is now on the uh, men's sitting volleyball uh, Paralympic team mm-hmm. and won gold, I believe, in Rio. Like, mm. uh, Andrew's doing amazing things on the East Coast, um, but he's a triple amputee, and he had these shirts. Uh, this was right when I was starting Team Overwatch, uh, and it said, what have you done to deserve your legs? And he used the, the profits uh, from the sale of those shirts to, um, and he donated it to EOD Warrior Foundation, mm-hmm. um, a nonprofit specifically for the EOD community uh, that helps families out, has scholarships for the kids. Yeah. Um, and, and you're we, veteran specific, correct? Yes. Or, okay. Well, yeah, military, yes. Yeah, okay. You can be active or, or out. Like, you know, okay. of course we vet. But you know, find there, there's real need, but not EOD. Gotcha. Okay. Kind of originally we thought about about that, and that was yeah. kind of short-lived because, like, well, why? Like, why? There's plenty of guys yeah. that need help. Yeah. Guys are, you know, that's not gender specific. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, like, he had this shirt, and it wasn't like I think a lot of people can kind of take it the wrong way, and I'm pretty sure some people have really have looked at me sideways. And I think, oh man, that shit got me fired up, right? I was like, like, and that's thing. like I'm going for I, when I do my races. I, I mean, I just did a 50k this this weekend, and I absolutely wanted to quit. Like, yeah, just didn't want to do it. And I was like, well, I mean, part of it is like, well, what if I don't? Like, I'm lucky yeah. to be able to do this. That's like, right. I'm lucky to be able to walk to my bathroom and brush my teeth in the mm-hmm. morning. Like, I don't have to do anything. That's easy. Yeah. So I owe, like that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Like I, it. I owe some respect. These guys had learned to walk again, yeah. you know, or, you know, learn how to brush their teeth again. Like, you know. Yeah. So I talked to Andrew and I was like, hey man, like I would love to use that 
slogan on my shirt. And he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, absolutely. Um, you just have to promise uh, to not ever endorse Wounded Warrior Project. Right, right. <laughs> and I was like, sure, I, that's, yeah. that's easy. Uh, so gentlemen's agreement, but yeah, so we, yeah. we have that on our shirts. Um, are you selling those? Can I buy one? Of absolutely. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the website team overwatch racing, uh, dot org. All right, cool. Uh, we'll link that up in the show notes. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We have, uh, I race in the shirts. The shorts are awesome. Um, somewhere between like, you know, with cotton and technical, but you know, the idea is like, not like, well, what have you done to deserve your legs, you know, and sort of a macho or, or like right, right. way, but like, like just think about how easy life life is mm-hmm. when you are i don't want to say able-bodied because i don't i think that's sort of a non-starter but yeah when you just haven't experienced that kind of loss like when that's when your life hasn't been changed when you have all your limbs mm-hmm. um yeah of course and not for nothing attaching a purpose behind what you're doing man i'm, I'm telling you like i i was thinking about it after this tahoe race because I mean, there there's some times where shit got dark in the middle of a 200 mile, yeah. right? How and can it's it like, but I raised like three thousand dollars for this race, and I'm like, dude, there's no, there's no fucking way I'm taking friend, money from friends and family and yeah. not finishing this bitch. I mean, yeah. it just can't be a thing. It's just not right. It's just and that's uh, how it is. Yep. you know, I've I have un I've not finished shit in the past, of course. Like I've you know coming up short of the mark, but man, there is no better motivation than like a worthy ideal behind any kind of physical pursuit, like putting any kind of purpose behind pain, in my opinion, which is why I think I like that, that slogan so much. I mean, after that, like I, I told some of the followers of the show, like I'm not even going to attach, I won't do another thing without attaching some kind of meaning behind it. And part of that's altruistic and part of it's because it made me fucking a much better athlete, a better yeah. person, a better, you know it's, what I mean? I mean, it's no different from looking up like motivational posters on Google, right? right? Like, of course. You know, I think, you just sometimes it helps to find that you know mantra or um i mean sometimes like it's hard to do it on your own whatever the task is it can be hard to do on your own exactly so so why not like feel like you have a community or some sort of backing like it it lends some some weight i think if you're you know you're trying to support some guys or support a family or your friends and family are supporting you because you're doing something awesome Mm -hmm. Uh, you're pushing yourself you're testing your limits um I know the first time I tried my first ultra marathon, I was just like, "This is miserable." Yeah, like, this right. Is so you can bad. get a fucked up yeah. headspace for sure. Yeah, you get you know your low blood sugar, like you yeah, get, you know you get hypoglycemic and and you just start like this. Why am I? This is dumb. Yeah, you start you know? asking. And yourself. then afterwards, I'm like, man, like it's just such a different experience. You know, mm-hmm. like you're so grateful. I was so grateful to have finished and so grateful to uh, have done it, and, and I was looking forward to doing it again. Um, you know, we do, so like I run, you know, um, one of my board members came up with an idea to do a keg tow. Mm-hmm. So she's a big swimmer. So we would tow a keg of beer, homebrewed keg of beer, um, a mile in the ocean. That was one of our big fundraising events we've done for a couple of years. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> um, and then like, and we kind of want to, you know, with, with these events, like we want to, like there's sort of a serious undertone to what have you done to deserve your legs? Yeah. Obviously, because, because people have lost them. But we want to have some fun with it too, and not just be like, "Hey, we're running a 5K, you guys." Right. Uh, not to diminish 5Ks, but you know, we want to be a little different. So, like, you know, the bomb suit runs or the keg toe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so last year when we did it, I challenged uh, my board member. I said, "You know, if you can um, sell 20 of these bricks, these big masonry bricks that she was adding to the, uh, um, like the barge, the keg barge, uh-huh. I was like, I'll tow you the bricks and the keg." And she did. I should have said like 50 bricks. Yeah. Uh, but she sold them. And I was like, all right. So we, we paddled out and then I hopped in the water and towed them in. Like, for a mile? For a mile. In the Puget Sound at that, oh, you know. So yeah. uh, in the end of September. So, I mean, it's fun also. Yeah. Right? It's right. fun finding your own limit. And you don't have to be an ultra runner. You don't have to be a, no, a swimmer. No, no. I'm yeah, by exactly. no means fast. Yeah, you know? right. In, no, either, in either regard. Neither. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just am too dumb to quit, I, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know some, most of the time. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm figuring out though, just, you know, I'm transitioning out of the military, starting a nonprofit, I'm doing this stuff with my company, and I'm realizing like, man, some of the best parts in life are coming from attaching a meaning to trying to find your potential, Yeah. right? And just playing with that, that balance is like a really, it's a cool thing, and I think it's something that a lot of people could benefit from. Well, and that's, and that's kind of the, the whole sponsorship thing, like, I always wanted to get sponsored and for whatever reason, like whether I, I was lacking the drive at the right age or 
you know, whatever it was, yeah, it didn't happen. And people. maybe it will, fingers yeah. crossed, right? Yeah, right. But, like, I was like, well, how cool would that be if I could sponsor other people? Mm-hmm. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. I don't care how old you are. Like, if, if your kid wants to do it, yeah, let's do it. And let's yeah. come up with a way to, to fundraise that money. Mm-hmm. I'm about it. Like, whatever it takes, let's, let's sit down and have a conversation. Um, I think... I just really think sponsoring somebody would be really cool. Yeah. So like, and then in addition to that, then they're also fundraising, which helps me out and then helps spreads out our, yeah, yeah, just, it just spreads. Right. Yeah. And it's sort of, um, like some other things I'm involved in, you know, where people, it's more about that community drive than like, I don't, I don't necessarily care if T.O. like grows and gets crazy and national recognition. I just want to be able to like help two families a year. Yeah. And then three families a year, mm-hmm. like because that's what the point is, you know. So, right. We're well, on. yeah, and it, I mean that there's a lot to be said for attaching your, you know, your drive or your motivator to the right thing too. Because I've talked to people, you know, I did a show with a guy a while back, Mike Bledsoe, episode twenty six. I don't know why I remember that. And uh, <laughs> we talked about, you know, why are you running your business at the time? It was I was really business minded. And my first thought, literally for the first year, was like, "Well, I just want to make fuck you money. Like, I don't know why that's <laughs> yeah. got to be a good enough for me." Right? Yeah, yeah. But but it it will get you to a place, right? It got me motivated, and I started a business, and I got got out, and I started hustling. But man, when you have a driver, that's a lot more important, right? Like just plurif plo. Never mind. I'm not gonna try to say the word. But just trying to uh, grow this ideal that you believe yeah. in strongly. It's such a strong. It's so much of a stronger motivator. Yeah, and you know, I'm, there's been times when I wanted to like stop, like I mean, like anything, right? Like, like I'm busy, or you know, I went through a divorce and my kids moved up north. Like, mm-hmm. that's a distractor, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. to say the least. Well, to so be active duty, you're still deploying and shit, right? Uh, I'm on shore duty right now, but I rotate back in April. Okay, so in it's April, get real, yeah, April yeah. for three years. We'll see what's up. You know, yeah. Um, so like it's a lot to balance yeah, yeah. And, you know so there have been times when I'm like this is not like uh, you know not enough shirts are selling or this or that and you know but you know I read over those emails from like the couple families a couple people that I've been lucky enough to like to, to work with and help like all right suck it up right and I quit you know and quit being a, a whiner yeah right, <laughs> you know, right. Just, I'm pretty lucky like yeah, I'm yeah pretty lucky about it and and honestly like it helps a lot with you know like I I don't have any you know, combat related issues, but like I had, you know, I think I had a pretty rough childhood. So like coming up and like being able to see other people and like help them kind of helps me too. Right. Like mm. helps me get that. Not just the fulfillment. Like I get a certain amount of fulfillment from my company, uh, sorry, community like EOD, but, but on like a personal level, like I reach out to somebody and I, and I really, really like, I think they see, I'd like to think that they see how much I care. Right. Um, but it, it makes you feel better. And it makes me feel like, okay, yeah. this is worthwhile. Like I'm worthwhile doing it. And I mean, it's just, everybody's winning. Yeah, <laughs> it right. Seems like, no, right? Like, I mean, it's yeah. true, man. It, it's like, that's what I was trying to kind of get at earlier. It's like, of course, some part of you has these altruistic ideals. And the other part of it is it makes you a better human, you know, like yeah. two months ago, I started buying coffee for the person behind me in line every single morning. And honestly, like people be like, "Oh, why do you do that?" And I'm like, ah, it "Makes me feel better." Yeah, <laughs> yeah I gotta be honest. I don't yeah. really give a shit it you. It's not super altruistic. Like, right. I it's guess just... you could be, but it's also like it makes me feel a certain way, which that's easy. Right. I'll do it. Right. Yeah. And, right. and there seems to be some kind of I don't know, like deep seated desire in us to that we're like hardwired in order to like help. And it probably has to do with our evolutionary biology coming up. But there's some deep seated desire there to like help the fellow, you know, your fellow human or whatever. Yeah. I, yeah, I completely agree. I think, I mean, look at, I mean, look at like, you know, you go to running stores, most of them have like a run club. Mm -hmm. It's free to show up. Yep. Uh, you look at, you know, November project, um, at November Project SD, uh, like are you part of that? Yeah. What are they? I always so, forget about this. Let's just talk. About I don't that know for a, a lot. I don't know a ton about it. I just started going like five, six months ago. They started popping up everywhere. There's one in Virginia. Beach. Yeah, there's 43 tribes, I believe, around the world. So okay. They're called tribes, and it's just a workout group. Uh, it's free. So here in San Diego, we meet Mondays and Wednesdays at 6:29 a.m. And we have some really great leadership who creates a workout. So you just show up. Yeah. You act friendly, mm-hmm. you know, or be friendly. I'm not much of a morning person. So yeah. It's it's somewhere it's a bit of an act. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, ah, oh, fine. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. And then they put on this workout for an hour. Okay. And everybody's like, you know, they're encouraging you. They're taking you know, like the leadership takes pictures. Like, and it's just to, for one, to get fit. Yeah. And two, like just to here's some community. Interact with people. Yeah. yeah cool. And 
And then, you know, from there, you see people like you see job opportunities pop mm -hmm. up. You see friendships pop up. You see all this, like people That's travel dope. to other like cities or countries. Yeah. Hey, can I crash somewhere? Yeah, yeah, here. Like those types of communities, you know, Very whether cool. it's run clubs or, or November Project or um, nonprofits that work together. Because I work, I have some really, I've had some really amazing luck with companies around San Diego that are like, yeah, I'll absolutely help you. They could help anyone else. Mm -hmm. Team Overwatch is small. Yeah, they don't owe us anything, but people bend over backwards to help us, and um, and I think like on a personal level for me, like that that is often what kind of brings me back when I'm like eh, I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, like because the people that put out time and effort mm -hmm. to to help me out, like that means a lot. That's cool. You mentioned something right there, um, which is like people don't have to help you out. One thing I've noticed from I guess from this podcast, from meeting a bunch of people that are just doing really cool things in the world is uh, if you just start, man, like people are down to help you out. Like the, you know, people that like some of my heroes growing up, I've reached out to and they come on the show. Right. And I mean, we don't even have an altruistic purpose. We just, we kind of do, but we just like, we're just trying to make people fitter, happier, and healthier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but people are down to help you out. And if they're not, they're dicks. Fuck them. Like <laughs> there's so many people that are right. Yeah. I mean, it's there's, crazy. There's been times when I was like, I just get like super frustrated, which is my friends will be like, Oh, that's hard. Yeah. But like, or rare. Right. Uh, you know, yeah, there's, you know, you get used to being told no. I'm yeah, sure you've yeah. experienced it. Any, any small business owner yeah. is going to have been told no yeah. a lot. And people are going to screw you over. Like, that'll happen too. It, it happens. We've been really lucky. We have. And I think that's probably a growing pain. That that's, conscious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I, you know, I think growing pains, like, that's a lesson that will come. Yeah. You know, we're small enough now. Like, we have a lot of control and say over things. Um, you know, hopefully not. You know, knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I have found, you know, uh, like our friend that introduced us, like mm -hmm. she doesn't know me. She doesn't owe me anything. Right, right. You know, but like, sure. hey, this could be a cool connection. Mm -hmm. Made it. And then look what happened. Right. You know, like, and that's the trend. That's that's the, the common denominator that I'm finding. Yeah. Like. By and large. People absolutely. are down. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the time it's, it's really easy for them. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't want to diminish it, but like, it seems like, like I just had to ask. I just had to put in a little effort to say, hey, like, could you guys do this? Like, what can I do to make it worth your while? I'll come pick it up. You know, whatever it is. Yeah, like, right. I'll put in the effort and they just... You know, and like, yeah. you know what? I think that's part of it, too, is people have to see that you are down for the cause. Meet them right? halfway. Yeah. Or, yeah, at least, you right? You know, right. So I think a lot of times people reach out to, uh, especially in the business world, I see this entrepreneurial world, people will reach out to the bigger names in the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial community and they're like, hey, I want to pick your brain. And it's like, okay, well, you didn't offer that person anything. You didn't, you're not showing any initiative at that point. You know, sometimes people will be like, yeah, like for me, I'd be like, oh, I'll tell you what I know. I don't care. Yeah. You know, but depending on how packed your schedule is and how big you are, that's a, that becomes a hard thing to accommodate. But when you go that extra mile, like you said, like, hey, I'll meet you halfway. I'll come pick up whatever, you know, yeah. that's when people start be, like realizing like, okay, this dude's vibrating at a higher frequency. I'm exactly. Gonna, yeah, like, and reciprocate. I would like to think like, you know, like, you know, Ragnar, for example, you know, we reached out to them. Uh, we do a clothing drive from October to December for San Diego's homeless community. Okay. Uh, and we reached out originally just to get leftover shirts from their races. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, like the race director I spoke to with was like, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we just had one, so we'll ship it to you. I'm like, I can pick it up. Like, no, no, we'll ship it. I'm like, all right. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to our, like, Utah, because that's where all the shirts from, like, I think the West Coast end up after yeah. race. And, like, I'll call them, too, and have them send you stuff. I'm like, yeah. and then it developed, like, I didn't just ask them for money. I was like, hey, like, how can we get involved with you guys? And they're like, well, you know, do you want to run our beer garden? You could come have your tent here and sell your, your stuff. Like, we have contracts that you have to abide by, like, you know, of course. Yeah, but sure, right. like, and then run the beer garden. Like, yeah, I'll do that. Like, we got it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just tell what do you need specifically, and we'll handle it from there. Like, how amazing are they to like oh, offer that awesome. up? That makes me want to run a Ragnar. That's yeah, cool. You, you know? absolutely should. Yeah. Like, and that's another community thing, right? Like, I've done the van, the road one. So the road one is like, you know, 12 people in vans, yep. you know, driving. And that's not really my cup of tea. I've done it once. It was a lot of fun, but mm -hmm. not, I'm more about like the trail, the trail running. How do those, those are loops, right? How does mm -hmm. that work? So it's red, like green, yellow, and red loops. Okay. Uh, green's the easiest, yellow somewhere in the middle, and then red is, you know, hard. Uh, but it's all skill level friendly. I mean, there's competitive teams and there's just, you know, uh, non-competitive teams. Okay. Um, you basically camp out. And we have seen, I've seen some like 
I mean, people bring out like living rooms. Like there's couches and like lights really? and music and they're cooking and people are, are awesome. And people, you know, some a team member might drop out and somebody else come over and be like, yeah, I'll, I'll run that loop for you. Like That's just dope. again, yeah. community, right? Yeah. It's the athletic part's great, and I love that like the spectrum of ability that's out there, but the community part, everybody's yeah. cool. Everybody's talking, they're having fun. Like I did the Ragnar last year. Um, we were just working our, our tent or our booth. Um, and I ran it in the suit. I ran, I just did the green loop mm-hmm. in the suit and people were just like, like, everybody's getting up, everybody's cheering. Like it was awesome. The runners were like laughing. Yeah. You know, like who is this idiot? Right, like, right, you right. know, they're just, just trying to have some fun and, and that's yeah that's cool man and, and like something to you know not for nothing for people that are trying to do something cool in the world whether it's a business or an mpo or whatever or fundraiser you know when you hear about people like i just heard that story about ragnar and i'm sure there's a lot of people listening that just heard that story about ragnar and they're like that's fucking cool i'll run a ragnar yeah. right because the millennial generation you know there's a lot of things that people can say that's bad about them but one of the things that's good is that they are cause oriented Right, they value experiences much over over things, mostly because they're poor. But <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It helps. It right, helps. Right. <laughs> but uh, but that's like if you want to make it with your organization in the world today, did you can't be a dick because word of mouth is so wow, important. Reputation, you know? yeah. yeah. And and with new media, with podcasts, and with all blogs and vlogs and all this shit, did you can't afford to have someone out there saying like, yeah, I reached out to him and he was a dick. Yeah, you know and what I've, I mean. I've, yeah, there's one experience that I, it comes to mind when you say that. And I was just like, this, this guy. I don't think he, I just don't think he gets it. And I don't, I don't know what his experiences are. I don't, right. I've never, I've never met the guy face to face. We've just had some brief interaction on email. So who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, and my tone could have been sure. off. You know, yeah, so who knows? But I was like, text, man, yeah. like, what is going on here? Like, this guy is really rough to work with. But I yeah. mean, but you got to think too. It's like, what? How is that guy's? What's like in that what guy's has, fucking head? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I have no idea what his life experiences are. Right. You know, and you know, maybe someday it'll work out. Like, maybe we'll meet in a different circumstance and be a completely different conversation. Yeah, you know, hopefully. Well, like you, like we talked about that deep seated desire to help people out. You can ignore that, and a lot of humans do, right? And you will be fine. Uh, but man, there's there's you're missing out on something. You're missing out on a really huge in part, like a big part of life, I think. Yeah, I, that's exactly it. Like, you know, even running an ultra, right? Like, I have a, a friend, um, and we've the couple times that we've talked about it, like, you know, you run an ultra or whatever distance you run. Like, mm-hmm. it, I, I refer to ultras because that's kind of what I run. Yeah. Right? So, um, they're kind of solo events, but only really to a point. Like, after a while, though, like, well, do you have a crew? Mm-hmm. Is anybody supporting you? Like, are they supporting you there at the race, or are they your friends and family ro- rooting for you? Uh, what happens when you finish? Mm-hmm. Like, look how amazing that is! Like, everybody's re- even like uh, people at DNF like do not finish, like or drop out for whatever reason. Like, mm-hmm. they are like, I have seen those guys go and start crewing. Oh, for other people, that's the like, best part. Of holy ultra. crap! Like, yeah. that's amazing. You know, like that blows my mind, and that's like, like I get more out of that. Like, yeah, sure, there've been times when I was just like, you know what, I'm not doing this. Like, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't, I'm being selfish, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah. But I find like those times are so far and few in between because it's so worth it to, right. to put yourself out there a little bit, even if it's kind of uncomfortable in the beginning, uh, that payout, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that karma payout. payout, you know, whatever it is. Like, right, right. Man, it's so worth it. Yeah. You know, so. Man, uh, at the Tahoe 200, the winner, and we're actually having him on the show, so I won't spoil too much of it, but nice. this dude ran the Tahoe 258 hours, I believe his time was. Total savage, right? Yeah. And if you look at it, his run streak, he's run every day for seven years or something like that. <laughs> Animal. Yeah. But he, uh, so he finished after two nights, slept the third night, drove his wife to the airport in Reno, drove back, and then paced somebody through the night the next night. That's... That's like what ultra is that's, like. That's yeah. like the most shining example of how cool the ultra community and is. And then, yeah, you know, even like, uh, I've seen people do that. You know, at you know the morning workouts. Mm-hmm. You know, people are still out. You know, you have a you have a broad spectrum of runners. Usually, there's running involved in calisthenics, right? Um, you partner up or whatever, and it's it's not about like you know one person winning. Very rarely, right. you know, even then, like it's usually a team. A mm-hmm. team effort, you know, like that person didn't get there by themselves, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I think that's the key. And like, I feel like that's kind of the key to a lot of things that we're struggling with as a, as a country or as a race, even. Mm-hmm. Uh, is like looking beyond you mean your, the human race? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Beyond uh, your personal sphere of influence. Yep. Like, 
you know, how I don't agree with, you know, with your opinion on X, whatever that is. And I'm not referring to anything in particular, yeah, yeah. you know, but like, what is, why does he think that? Right. Like, sure. He could just be an asshole, mm-hmm. but probably something is driving you towards that, whether it's the way you were brought up or personal experience in you know, in life or combat or marriage or yeah. whatever, like. Some, there's a reason and like I think if we try to reach out and understand that mm-hmm. yeah I could be full of shit I don't no, know I don't think you are dude I don't think you are cause uh, nothing like and I mean that seriously nothing has influenced my life more than um, than realizing that everybody has their lens that they're looking through I used to be one of these people that would get wicked bent out of shape about yeah. um, like politics in general right um, you yeah. know I didn't want to bring up no, I know, it's so I know. No, I know, right I know. I, but there's I'm so laughing. many, yeah. and I, I used to be that guy that would get so pissed, right? And I would be like, "Fuck you, fuck you," and I was mad all the time. Yeah. And uh, it, I realized, like, you just have to realize, like, this person is going through things in their life, and you know, all of us know what it's like to fight the tide and keep getting washed back up on shore. Yeah, Literally, all of us. Really all of us saying it. Yeah. yeah, right. Like all of us know to what it's like to be in a situation where we're way over our heads and we're fucking ill-equipped to deal with it. And that manifests and comes out in all of these different ways. And so for me, I like got to a point where I just had to like step back and realize like whatever it is that you're thinking, it's because like you said, there's been things in your life and I have no idea what those are that have shaped your lens, the way that your yeah. worldview. And man, we would all be much better humans if we could just realize that about everybody else around yeah. us. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's exactly it. Like, you know, I've definitely struggled with anger in the past Mm -hmm. uh, and it's still a thing. It's better than it was. Um, You know, I hope others see that as well. Right. Of course. Uh, But I think like if you, you know, and that's okay, Mm -hmm. you're entitled to feel how you feel. Like, you know, your experience has shaped you in the way that you are. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no fault or blame. Right. Um, you know, but like, okay, so I know I get frustrated about politics yep. or about, you know, whatever the topic is. Like, there's things I get super riled up about. But then it's like, okay, well, what is what is the message here? Like, why, why do they think that? Why is it this? Like, okay, I can be angry or frustrated by it. But, like, is the way I'm, like, projecting myself or the way I'm, you know, talking, I mean, is that gaining anything or am I just being a loud asshole? Like, right, right. You know, like, well, yeah. Okay. And that's like that. Let's, improve your argument. Don't raise your voice. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. okay. So I need to, I need to crank that around and try to have like, see it from their perspective and at least try to put mine aside for a moment and understand mm-hmm. uh, what they're dealing with. Yeah. So, I mean, I think when you do that too, like that anger, it gets replaced with more empathy, right? It gets, yeah. Well, you're you, learning, you're right? More, like compassionate, yeah. like right. And then, if you really feel strongly about what X, Y, or Z topic, then um, at that point, now you have like you're much more well equipped to try to get your point across. Well, and well, exactly. Right. That's exactly it. Like, and if you can, I would like to think like if you put effort into something, then they'll put effort into you, right? You know, so like if you see that I'm trying to like, all right, like this guy's agitated, you know, whatever. Um, but he's making an effort to hear me and hear where I'm coming from and understand. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe you'll do the same when you're when I'm trying to explain it. You know, like I don't know. I, I don't know if it's working, but I definitely yeah. try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that is literally the uh, the key right there, right? Yeah. To if you if you want to make any kind of a difference, which is cool because this conversation really just full came circle. full circle. <laughs> uh, but if you want to make any kind of a difference, you have to approach things with that attitude, right? And then goes back to the fact that if you have an organization. And you come off with that first attitude that we talked about. Mm-hmm. You're going to be highly ineffective at getting your point gonna, across because you're going to yeah. alienate a fuckload. You're going to be people. slamming doors right. way faster than opening them. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's you know, I've definitely been like this. That one guy I was working with on the email, like we were definitely the door was open to like just be shitty back and forth. Right. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, I don't know what his problem is but I don't know what his problem is, right? right. Like, so, so I'm not going to like antagonize or be antagonistic because, you know, he may think I'm coming at him. I, I don't, I, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, exactly. We're being combative and I, okay, so let's just, just let it lie. We'll just call it good and then, you know, like. Yeah, and, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's why I said like, you know, there's going to be by and large, most people are down to help you out yeah. or to do what they can 
And if they can't, fuck them. Like, I mean... Yeah. And it doesn't... Yeah. It's just like, okay, this isn't for us. There's nothing here. There's seven cool. billion people in the world. Good luck. Right. Yeah. We'll yeah. figure exactly. it out. And, and, you know, and, you know we, have, we have our goals and our agendas, and, and I, I try to set my, uh, my master chief... Um, who I, I, I largely consider like my mentor. I don't know if he knows that. <laughs> he might now. But like, okay. you know, he likes to say, uh, set high standards but low expectations. I'm like, okay. So like I try to bring that to Team Overwatch. Like, you know, there's, I mean, I want to shoot for the moon. Like I have all these crazy oh, ideas. Yeah. Yep. But it can be really hard to achieve those. So like, okay, what's realistic? What can I actually like, you know, I can still shoot for the moon, but, you know, but this is what we're doing now. Let's make sure I do it the best I can. And then eventually I'll get there. Yeah. You know, eventually we'll get, you know, this or that. And it's coming together. It, it is. It's, it's slow. But, mm-hmm. I mean, that's not bad. Right. And, I mean, that applies to people, too. Because if you're running an organization where you're relying on people's charitable efforts, you know, that's that's a lot different than paying somebody. That's a um, big ask. Right. It's a big Everybody's ask. got their hand so, Yes, you have high expectations because you're so passionate about what you're doing. And it's going to be really hard to... Uh, for everybody to meet those expectations, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, everybody's got their hands out. That's why, like, that's part of why I wanted to do athletic apparel. Um, you know, when we sell it, not only are you, uh, I mean, helping us, supporting. you're repping us, yeah, you're, you're supporting you're, the but, cause, but a portion of every sale, if every item sold goes into our charity account. Mm-hmm. So, like, if we don't have a family on deck, we have money set aside. Like, we are constantly growing a pot of money. So, when we do get that family, we can immediately yeah, start trying to uh, assist them, whatever they need. Yeah. So, um, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that that's cool. I mean, and that that needs to be done, right? You need to um, you need to be fit for service. Like that's that's kind of the problem. It's like um, you know, you see a lot of people that want to do good. That's this is honestly one of my problems with a lot of times that like hippie mentality, right? It's like. You have the you you're trying to plur, pluriferate. I can't say that word. I'm not gonna. I fucking tried it earlier. <laughs> you're trying to uh, you know you care so much about all these causes and you you know you're you know a lot of people are very love centric, right? But at the same time, if you are ineffective in what you're doing, if you're only talking about it, then you yeah. can only make so much of a difference. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so with you, when you kind of have this hybrid ideal between the nonprofit and the for profit selling the apparel. That makes you fit for service. That allows you to impact yeah. people in a bigger way. And I and that yeah, and that gets me right back on track actually. So it's like you know, I don't want to just say, hey, can you can I have some money? Like, well, look, if you buy this shirt, which like our shirts, our cotton ones are are excellent quality. Mm-hmm. Our technical ones are by New Balance, just with our our oh, we, nice. re, we re-randed them. Yep. Um, so we're selling like you know, high quality athletic apparel. So you're getting something. Yeah. And then we get a little bit too. You know, like you're supporting our mission. Yep. You're supporting a family either currently or, or in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that versus just, hey, I need money. For sure. You know, even when I do like a pledge run, like when I did a 100 mile uh, ultra, my first, like people pledge money per mile. And that's that was awesome. I was really grateful that they did it. But that's still a hard ask. You're still basically just saying, hey, give me money. Right. So I really wanted to try to give people a reason to send money my way. You know, sure. so they can buy you know, some nice running apparel or the shorts, you know, I have some friends that, you know, lift or do CrossFit and they love the shorts, like whatever it is. Like I try to cater, of course, that market, Mm -hmm. you know, that's trying to be a businessman, right? Yeah. Not that I know what I'm doing, but but (laughs) trying, you know, but then like, I just like that more than just sticking out my hand and expecting, right? Like I can't expect people, like everybody's got, I don't care who you are. You probably have a hard, like money's hard to come by for everyone. Right, right. Nobody, I mean, very few of us are, right. are just like, whatever, and just don't yeah. care. So you you're, you're on the right, you're giving value, right? And that's, that's, that's what That's matters. the goal. Yeah. yeah, that's the goal. So the Lionheart Kicker is the final question that we ask every guest, and I actually should have front-loaded you with this, and I totally <laughs> fucking did it. But uh, it, it's okay, it takes a minute. But um, this can be based on the things you've done in the military, or the ultras, or with the NPO, whatever, whatever you want. If you were given a platform for the day, for the day, and you could give advice, and it were guaranteed that it would be translated to every language, every all seven billion people on the uh, in the world would hear what you said. They might not all follow it, but they would definitely hear uh, your advice. What would you tell people? Hmm. So, <laughs> uh, the first thing that came to mind is from as a quote from a guy uh, his name is Draper Kaufman, 
He's the father of uh, Navy EOD and today's Navy SEALs. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's not his quote. It's a letter his father sent him in World War II. Uh, his father at the time was um, an admiral that was in charge of all the destroyers. Mm-hmm. And his father wrote him a letter and it said, um, you know, as long as you've tried your damnedest, who the hell cares what people think? Mm. And and that might seem sort of confrontational kind of along the lines of like, what have you done to deserve your legs? But I like the idea like, you know, we all have those days when we just want to stop. We just want to, you know, we're, the kids are annoying or the job, my boss sucks or my wife is bitching at me. Whatever it is, yeah. we all have those days where you just want to quit. Um, you know, but don't. Right. You know, keep keep pushing put in that effort because people will see that sure and then they'll reciprocate yeah you know maybe not right away um you know i definitely have friends who are they're gonna hear this and they're like yeah put the effort in and then you get that reciprocation yeah you know you'll get that support whatever it is yeah yeah i mean we put a ton of external pressure on ourselves in our day-to-day so much and that's um that's i mean that's fucking great advice because that's i mean that's really how i've I've come to have to look at it it's like at the end of the day man if you tried your damnedest if you gave everything that you had it's nothing else yeah it's it yeah it's nothing else you can ask of yourself that's it and and then take it like and allow yourself like okay i did my best right okay yeah i you know good that's it good good on me like you know, try to be happy with that. And then, and I think if you can couple that with what we were talking about earlier, as far as like caring, you know, making an effort to see outside your sphere, Mm -hmm. like your experiences and your beliefs, try to, you know, try to bridge that gap with other people. You don't have to agree with it. Just maybe under like get educated about it. Yeah. What it is, like why they think like that or where they're coming from that might make them think like that. Then, then I think, you know, if you can combine those two, like, and I think they're kind of one in the same, yeah. you know, like effort, right? Yep. I think that'll, the end result, I think, is is a more solid community. Yeah. You know? I think if a lot of people had your uh, similar mindset, the world would be, it would be a better place. And I appreciate that. Yeah. David Lyman, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to Lionheart Radio. I hope that the information from today's show will make you fitter, happier, and healthier. For the show notes of this episode and every episode, head to www.lionheartrad.io. Yep, just like Lionheart Radio. And please, if you have the time, head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. It really helps us to know that we're on the right track in delivering you reliable information and value. As always, feedback is welcome. If you have any comments on the show or would like to suggest a guest, Send me an email at rick at louisvive.com. That's L-U-A-V-I-V-E.com. Thanks for your support, and we will see you next time. Bitch, I feel good. Don't I look stupendous? My shine is so endless, and shit you can do to end this. Even when I'm dead, niggas still gon' bump that chip shit. Coke, white, escalate on cinches for you dipshit. So you won't forget this. Midwest, nigga, be the coldest. Cleveland,